welcome to the course on VLSI physical design with timing analysis. In this lecture, we will discuss about what are the low power cells available inside the standard cell library. So, the content of this lecture includes, so the cells related to power cells, basically the power cells. So there are several low power cells are there, we are discussing some of them, isolation cells, retention cells, always on buffer, switch cells and level shifters. Similarly, we have some power cells are there, uh, for example, well tap, end cap and uh, decap cells, we will discuss about them. Finally, we will discuss about some of the miscellaneous cells such as delay cell, tie cell and clock cells. So, in the last class, we discussed about the use of the standard cell library. The standard cells are used in case of uh, in the step of logic synthesis and physical synthesis. So, this is the uh, flow chart what I showed in the last lecture also, but uh, we have few more cells left out. So, uh, in today's uh, class, we will discuss about basically the low power cells. First, we will discuss about the low power cells. So, the always on buffer, then label shifter, then the switch cell, then isolation cell, then the retention cell. Okay. So, these five different types of cells we will discuss. Then we will uh, go to the different power supply related cells. So, this is the second category which includes one is the well tap cells, then we have the second one is the end caps, then we have the third one is the D caps. Then uh, we will discuss uh, about the miscellaneous cells. So, the in, in the category of miscellaneous cells, we will discuss about the uh, delay cell, then the uh, tie cells, then the clock cells or ICG integrated clock getting cells. ICG stands for integrated clock getting cells. So, now first of all we will discuss about the low power cells. So, these low power cells are essential uh, requirement for low power implementations. Okay. So, here uh, whenever we have low power implementation, we have two different power supply is there. One is the global power supply and the local power supply. So, we have a global power supply and we have a local power supply. The global uh, power supply will be always on, but the local power supply will be on based on the requirement. Okay. So, that is the first step. Then this always on cells are uh, uh, basically sitting inside the low power uh, domain which will be connected to both global and the local power supply. So, we need to create global power mesh other than the local power mesh in the power plan stage before the route stage. So, uh, our power planning should be done before the uh, routing of the signal nets. So, in this case, we have to create the global power grid and the local uh, power grid before the routing stage. So, there are some uh, enable pins uh, uh, basically is there. The enable cells are there inside the always on block uh, which is used to basically supply uh, should be connected to the global or the local power supply. Okay. So, this uh, enable pin will de determine whether the always on cell should be connected to the global or the local power supply. So, here we are discussing uh, basically we have uh, where this always on buffer will be used. Okay. So, the always on buffer will be used uh, whenever we have uh, always on signal nets. So, always on signal nets uh, includes reset and the enable. So, this reset and enable is passing through our low power domain. Okay. So, whenever the local power supply is off, during that time this always on buffer will be on through the global power domain and it will make the reset and enable signal active during the low power domain. So, then we will discuss about uh, another type of low power cell which is called the isolation cell. So, it is very interesting. Uh, so, what it does is that, so we have uh, basically uh, two power domain is given here. One is uh, basically power gated domain, this is one okay. and this is always on domain because it is always on, there is no switch in this uh, uh, power supply. But in the first one, uh, this uh, here we have a uh, switch cell to disconnect the power supply, but some of the signals from this power domain is going to the always on block. 
okay this is the signal some of the signals are going so those signals whenever we are switching off the power gated domain then those sig signal will not be active or uh, and those pins will be floating okay so these floating nets are not good from the design point of view so what usually done is that we added a isolation cell between the two power domain so this isolation cell has a uh, another signal called enable signal okay so when your power cell switch this is basically off when this is off then the uh, enable should be zero so uh, the since the enable is zero then the output of the nand gate will be zero so here so uh, when enable is zero so then any signal going from your uh, this uh, first power domain to the second power domain that should be basically have zero value because the enable is zero since the enable is zero the output of the uh, the and gate is, will be zero and the corresponding signal value will be zero so the, since it is zero it is not floating then it will not uh, do any kind of undesirable event but when the both the power domains are working in that case this and gate will act as a buffer the first case this and gate will act as a buffer and uh, will act as a buffer for all the input signal uh, going from the first power domain to the second power domain so there are uh, uh, basically switch cells are there okay so uh, the switch cells uh, basically helps us to disconnect from the power supply so there are two types of switch are there one is the header switch and the one is the footer switch the header switch is connected to your uh, uh, vdd and the footer switch is connected to basically vss so in this uh, case we have a header switch which is a pmos transistor and uh, it is a high vt transistor to reduce the leakage of that transistor and this is the virtual vdd this is a virtual vdd basically for this uh, block similarly we have a footer switch uh, designed using a nmos transistor and the slip uh, uh, signal is connected to the nmos uh, footer transistor so in some cases we can have uh, both the header and uh, footer switch uh, connected in this case for example uh, we have a uh, header and a footer both are connected uh, um, connected in the power supply so this uh, basically it will cut off the supply to the actual core logic okay so by that way you can uh, uh, save the power so the placement of these cells can be done in two different manner like uh, we can place these cells uh, uh, which basically the switch cells uh, in a uh, coarse grid manner or a fine grid manner so depending upon the requirement we need to do that uh, placement of the switches uh, during the vlsi uh, physical design so now we look into the retention cell actually the retention cell is essential uh, to retain the um, internal states or values of the flip flop okay whenever we are switching off the power domain the content of the flip flop should be stored if you can see here we have two power domain this is one power domain okay and this is always on power domain this is the uh, basically the local power domain this is the local power domain this is the global power domain so let's say the local power domain is off then the output of the flip flop will be lost because the supply to the flip flop is lost so if in that case what happens is that we can uh, basically we have the global power domain which is holding that value through this latch okay this latch will hold the value of the flip flop this uh, output is connected so uh, basically the output of the flip flop is connected to the input of this latch so this is the d and this is the q let's say okay this is the q and uh, this is the d so if the latch has a supply it can hold that value latch has a supply it can hold the output of the flip flop in this node actually in this node so what is happening is that basically this value will be uh, circulated back so if you can see here this is let's say basically this value will be stored here and uh, this is 1 and this is 0 when the restore is 1 then it will restore the value 
okay, before the uh, VDD switch uh, on, we can restore the value and store the previous value of the uh, flip flop what is stored in the latch. So, we are talking about uh, different types of cells available in the uh, standard cell library which can be used for low power implementation. Then the next type of the cell is called the label shifter. Now we are discussing about the label shifter. Okay. In the label shifter we have uh, uh, for example, uh, we have a CPU block and uh, we have a peripheral block. We have two different power supply, let us say this is VDD1 and VDD2. We can uh, change uh, the supply of the VDD, uh, whatever the let us say supply the, the CPU is running, then uh, that translation which is be suitable to be taken by the peripheral block that can be done using a label shifter. There are two types of label shifter can be possible where you can convert the low voltage to the high voltage and uh, some cases high voltage to the low voltage. Okay, depending upon our requirement, we can uh, have different types of label shifters. Okay. So, let us say in this case, let us say the CPU is running at a low supply voltage, then we need a low to high, high voltage label shifter. So, it is very useful for reducing the uh, power dissipation of the circuit because your supply voltage uh, if reduces then uh, your uh, power dissipation will be reduces quadratically. Now, we have uh, different types of power cells are there, one of them is the well tap cells. Okay. This well tap cells are used to connect to the uh, well taps with respect to VDD and VSS connections. So, basically let us say I have a uh, this is a PMOS transistor. Okay. So, the substrate of the PMOS should be connected to VDD and the NMOS transistor substrate will be connected to ground. Okay. Okay. So, now uh, how we can connect them? There are two different methods are there. Uh, there are is uh, one case, these taps are connected in the power supply line. There are two types of libraries available. Uh, basically, the uh, one is called the, uh, basically we have a tap cell. Is uh, available separately. Separately. In the second case, tap cells are built in the power rails. Okay. So, basically how we can build uh, the tap cells uh, is a uh, basically it is a very interesting thing. So, if we do not provide uh, the proper basically tap connections, uh, then the, there will be latch up issues which will, uh, uh, we, uh, the chip will never work because of the uh, low resistance path due to the latch up. Okay. We should provide a proper uh, tap connection uh, to the logic gates such that it will function as desired. If it is having the built in the power rail, in that case you cannot do body biasing, but in this case you can do body biasing. It is possible to create a different uh, supply for uh, uh, body contact. It is possible in case of a, if the tap cell is available separately. But in the second case, if it is connected with the uh, power rail, then you cannot do uh, no body biasing is possible in this case. Okay. Now we have uh, basically end caps and boundary cells are there. So, these cells are placed at the end of the row. Okay. Let us say this is at the row of a standard cells. So, if you can see these are the rows of the standard cells, this is the VDD, this let us say this is the VDD line and this is the ground line. Then the, the previous VDD will be overlap, uh, the next row VDD will be overlap with the this VDD. 
So, this is the VDD of the next row and this is the ground of the next row and this will be continue like this. Okay. So, now uh, this uh, basically this end cap cells will be placed at the end of the boundary of the row uh, for uh, proper well tie connections and it has uh, another uh, requirement of uh, uh, basically proximity issues. Let us say if I have a uh, any kind of transistor the both the side uh, should be identical such that the effect of process variation will be minimum. If a transistor is sitting here without the end cap cell, then the one side behavior and the other side behavior will be different. So, this end cap cell will uh, basically avoid this proximity issue uh, what is happening inside uh, the uh, transistors. Now, we are talking about uh, D cap cells actually. Okay. This D cap cells are uh, decoupling capacitors which is connected to the power supply mesh. Uh, the uh, D cap cells are the decoupling capacitor uh, which is connected to the power supply mesh. Uh, since it is connected to the power supply mesh, it will reduce the uh, basically external noise and uh, it also reduces the uh, dynamic air drop. So, it is best practice to uh, pre place the D cap cells next to the high toggling nets. Okay. Some of those nets are toggling uh, very much, uh, for, for example, clock buffers. In that case, we need to add this uh, D capsules to reduce the variation. So, now uh, we have uh, delay cells. The delay cells are the buffer cells uh, with high delay and lower transition uh, time. Okay. It has a large delay and a slower transition time. Okay. So, so, basically a slew will be larger here output of the delay cell, let us say this is a delay cell, the output of the delay cell will have more uh, slew transition time is higher with uh, wider channel. So, uh, the basically length is uh, wider, it can drive high current actually. So, these cells are used uh, basically to let us say if you have a hold violation, uh, we can use these delay cells or high VT delay cells because why high VT? because if uh, your VT of your transistor is higher, then your delay increases uh, because your current uh, reduces. So, if your threshold voltage increases, your current through the transistor uh, decreases, hence the delay increases. Okay. So, VT H increases implies your drain current decreases implies your delay propagation delay increases. Now, we have a uh, different uh, uh, cells which is called the tie cells. Sometimes uh, we want to fix some of the inputs to either 1 or 0. In that case, uh, we have to use this tie high, tie low cells. This is used to clamp signals to either 1 or 0. Okay. Uh, in some technology, you can do direct connection to VDD and ground, but uh, if uh, the supply voltage uh, uh, switch off and on happens, that will create the power supply and ground bounds. So, it is not uh, a good idea to connect your input of the um, gate to the power supply. If uh, either, even if it is connected to fixed uh, or logic 0 or logic 1. So, in that case, we connect that uh, uh, inputs to the tie cells. So, no input pins uh, uh, are should be kept open. If the pin of the input of his uh, cell is open, it can uh, basically uh, can have any voltage. Okay. If uh, any of the pins are open, then it can uh, basically capture any voltage. So, it is not good idea to keep the uh, pin of the cells open. So, it is it should be connected either to the tie high or tie low cells. How these uh, cells look like? So, if you can see here, let us say I want to connect this input of this uh, inverter to logic high. Okay. So, I want to connect this uh, uh, input to the logic high. This is not a good practice to connect this uh, uh, input to the VDD. This is not a good practice. So, what we need to do instead? We need to connect a tie high cell, okay, 
tie high cell this is a tie high cell to the input of the logic gate. So, uh, how the tie high cells look like if you can see here your uh, NMOS transistor is diode connected hence it is in saturation. So, the input uh, voltage to the PMOS transistor will be ground hence the supply voltage uh, at the this node is VDD hence that will be connected to the input of your uh, any logic gate where there is a requirement of uh, inputs to be connected to logic high. Similarly, you can do the analysis for the tie low cells. Okay. So, now we will discuss about uh, basically clock cells which is very useful for uh, during the clock tree synthesis. Uh, what is the uh, use of that one? It will uh, reduce the clock tree latency this is the first one and uh, second one is the it will minimize the skew between the two pins uh, basically minimize the skew and it also uh, reduces the power dissipation. Third goal is to reduce the power dissipation. And there are different types of uh, clock cells are uh, there like C buffer and C inverter which is used for H tree and uh, super buffers are used for clock mesh structures. So, main goal here is to uh, generate a balanced rise and fall transition. Your uh, transition time of the clock should be as equal as possible. This is the rise transition and this is the fall transition should be as balanced as possible and low propagation delay. So, we have another category of cell which is called the integrated clock gating cell ICG. So, here it is used to save dynamic power on the clock network. Okay. So, uh, whenever you do not do any job we can switch off the clock going to that uh, module. So, what will happen is that uh, during that time the clock will not go to the that circuit then your uh, frequency uh, component of the dynamic basically power f should be 0 and the, the frequency of the clock is 0 because of this clock getting cell then the dynamic power dissipation will be reduced. So, it is inserted in the RTL during the synthesis and or in the place and or, or route phase. So, the placement of this cell are very critical whenever you are doing the proper uh, clock gating. So, there are uh, some other cells in the standard cell library for example, different uh, drive strength cells are there for example, uh, 1x drive strength, 2x drive strength uh, uh, like, uh, like different drive strength cells are available to basically drive different loads. Threshold voltage is there for example, we have uh, low uh, Vt then high Vt then standard Vt or nominal Vt. So, this nominal Vt uh, is the typical uh, corner uh, basically the threshold voltage is in typical condition and whenever we are using low Vt means that my performance is higher. So, whenever I have a critical path I want to improve the performance of the critical path I can use the low Vt cells. But the non-critical path where there is no, uh, it is not critical, then there I can use the high Vt cells to reduce the basically power dissipation. So, low Vt cells are faster, okay, and uh, but it has high leakage, but the high Vt cells are slower with less leakage. Then we have different uh, uh, density based uh, classification is there, for example, you have uh, basically 9 track standard cell library is there, 10 track standard cell library is there, 10 track then I have 8 track standard cell library are there, but uh, if I have more tracks then the basically performance will be higher uh, basically it will occupy more area, speed will be higher if you increase the height of the cell, but it will occupy more area. So, uh, the standard cell library designer will look into uh, basically different uh, um, basically they have different flavors of the standard cell library uh, in a particular given technology node. So, the designer can utilize the 
standard cell based on their requirement. Then we also have uh, single height, multi height standard cells, okay, uh, which can be used in case of uh, in floor planning to create a proper site rows actually. So, in this lecture, we discuss about uh, different uh, low power cells available in the standard cell library, different power uh, related cells available in the standard cell library and also different uh, uh, classes of uh, standard cell library which is useful for various applications. Thank you for your attention.